Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you've been watching my videos or reading my articles since 2005, you know that I've been consistent in explaining that there is no difference at all between the governments of Russia, America, Iran and Israel and that they are really the same and are all part of the same satanic secret society known as the Zionist Illuminati. Well, very recently, Turkey's relations with Russia has improved and shortly after, the Turkish government made an agreement with the American government to bomb the Syrian Mujahideen together and with the cooperation of Russia. After a long anticipated meeting between Presidents Putin and Erdogan, who'd been at odds with each other since last autumn. But while the two leaders seek closer ties, RT's Daniel Hawkins looks at the possible reasons behind Turkey's U turn towards Russia. Earlier this summer, this meeting was unthinkable. The prospect of a military coup and turmoil in the streets at home, Erdogan looked to his main NATO partner for backup. But that took its time to materialize. Instead, that support came from the most unlikely source. Enter President Putin, one of the first leaders to contact Erdogan and offer what he called moral and psychological support. A whole new idea of having Turkish troops participate in a joint operation to liberate the Syrian city of Raqqa from Daesh, of, where he said that the Turkish troops can now uh, be part of the larger uh, coalition fighting Daesh and play a role for the liberation of Raqqa. And it's also important to note that the suggestion came from the American side. In his own words, President Erdogan said that Obama uh, raised the idea of doing some things in common concerning uh, Raqqa and that Russia is informed about each and every phase of this ground operation by the Turkish military. So this shows that right as Turkey's relationship with America improved, so did their relations with Russia. I know that Turkey had relations with America before, but now they are fighting alongside each other in a direct military alliance. What's also interesting is that all this began when Turkey or Erdogan improved relations with Iran. You see, first, the Turkish government took part in creating the FSA or Free Syrian Army. The FSA fights against the Nusayri government of Assad and their 12 Imami Shia allies from Iran. So this shows that at that time, the Turkish government had turned against Iran and their Illuminati agenda. Then Iran and Israel created fake FSA factions in Syria and also the Nusra Front or Jabhat al-Nusra who tried to control and dominate the Sunni uprising. But when they failed to do so, they tried to turn the Sunnis against other Sunnis and they massacred Sunni civilians and they also attacked the FSA itself. But after ISIL or ISIS entered Syria, the Nusra Front started calling for unity with the FSA against ISIL. And then we saw that all of a sudden the relations between Iran and Turkey improved at the same time. As for ISIL, don't listen to all the disinformation about them being created by America or by Turkey. The truth is that ISIL or ISIS or Daesh was created by former officers of Saddam Hussein in an alliance with the Jordanian Knights of Malta, whom I call the Taoist Masons. Anyway, it's very interesting that at the same time that Iran's relations with Turkey improved, the fake Al-Qaeda, also known as the Nusra Front, who are Russian-speaking Shias, pretending to be Sunnis, they all of a sudden joined Turkey's 
FSA who were their former enemies and thus formed the so-called Islamic FSA. And then we saw that Turkey's relations with Russia also improved and just a few days after Turkey and America formed a military alliance in Syria. So the point I'm making is that this makes it clear that America and Russia are on the on, they are on the same side, they are one and the same. Why else would Turkey's relations with Russia improve at the same time that they formed a military alliance with America? Why is there no conflict between the Russian military in Syria and the American military? Or, or even between the Shias of Syria and the American military in Syria? Or between the Shia government of Iraq and the American military inside Iraq, which you know has been there since 2003. Why is there no conflict between them? Aren't we always told by the Zionist mainstream media, by television, and the disinformation agents, you know, the fake conspiracy theorists, the the people who want to confuse us in the cons the fake. Uh, conspiracy researchers, the, the so-called alternative media. Why is it that they all tell us that Syria, Iran and the Shias are totally independent from America and Israel and that they are actually America's biggest enemies in the world? So if that is true, if what the TV and the disinformation agents say if that is true, why aren't the Shias attacking the American Air Force or vice versa? Why isn't uh, America bombing them? America has been bombing Syria for years now, as is Russia at the same time. Yet these free groups, supposedly, these free groups have, don't attack each other and there's not been any conflict between them in Syria. In fact, the only conflict that these three groups have supposedly had with each other have been verbal conflicts, the only through their mouth. The, the, only, the only conflicts that they've had is that they've been saying bad things to each other, you know, insulting each other, supposedly, apparently. That's the only conflict that they've had, is verbal. So, they want, so the only conflict that they have is what the TV quotes them saying so the only conflict between Iran, America, Russia and Israel is the stuff that they want us to believe it's what the TV reports, it's nothing secret because that's what they're saying openly and that's what the TV is reporting all the time and that's what the politicians say in front of millions of people so this is not what's really happening, this is what they want the public to believe Russia, America, Israel and Iran, they all want to, the public to believe that there, is, there are these conflicts between them when they say these things. That's why they say these things. If they had real conflicts, they, they, it wouldn't be in their interest to talk about them to the public. Why do they want the public to know or think that they have conflicts between each other? How does that benefit them unless the conflicts are fake? It's clear that America, Russia and Iran all have the exact same agenda, the same goals, the same government, and the same enemies. They are all bombing the anti-Zionist Sunni Mujahideen in Syria. And if you think that this isn't true, then please tell me who America has been bombing in Syria for the past few years. Have they been bombing Assad? If so, why hasn't Assad retaliated or even said anything? Have they been bombing Iran's militias and Hezbollah Dajjal, the so-called Hezbollah? Again, why haven't they retaliated or done anything about it? And why is the Shia government of Iraq fully supported, armed, funded and trained by the American military? I've explained these things in detail on my past videos, especially on my video um, titled The Real Truth About Assad. The point I wanted to make here is that Turkey's alliance with Iran and then Russia and then America and cooperating with them 
all on the same issue, the issue of Syria, shows that there is no conflict of interest between Turkey's new allies. But an important question some of you may be asking is if the Illuminati always lie and have fake verbal conflicts on TV and fake negotiations and fake fights, like you know the whole fake drama between America and Iran or Iran with Israel, then why is Turkey openly and admittedly forming these alliances? How can I say that everything that supposedly happens between the Illuminati groups is fake, but at the same time say that Turkey's recent alliance with Russia and America is real? Well, as I said, you need to watch the real truth about Assad. You, you need to watch that video series that I made last year. But here are the relevant clips in order to answer that question. Why would the Zionists openly show that Erdogan is allied with Iran? It is because, as I said on many of my past videos, Erdogan is actually not part of the Illuminati, as there exist two groups of Zionists. The Zionist Illuminati, who control Iran, America, Israel, Russia, the UN, and many others, and the Zionist Jews, the actual Jews, not Satanists who pretend to be Jews, but real Jews, who control many of the pantheist Sufis, the followers of Rumi that they call Jalal din Some Israelis are also part of this secret society, such as Ariel Sharon and much of the Likud party in Israel, but not the entire Israeli government. Israel is mostly Illuminati, but some Israelis belong to this secret society. And much of the Muslim Brotherhood, but there are also Satanists or Illuminati within the Muslim Brotherhood, but it's mainly Jewish. It's mainly run by Jews. Egypt, before Sisi, was also controlled by this Jewish secret society, and of course, Turkey. Since these Zionists are not part of the Illuminati, their alliance with the Illuminati is actually in the open, and their apparent political negotiations aren't always fake. In fact, Assad belongs to the same Jewish ideology as the Jewish Sufis of Turkey, except that Bashar Assad changed sides for political reasons during the American invasion of Iraq. Him, uh, President Rouhani belongs to the same secret society that controls Israel, America, Russia, and Iran. And uh, Erdogan is part of a Jewish secret society that controls much of the so-called uh, Muslim Brotherhood. And... Uh, many other countries. When Hassan Rouhani, who is a liberal Zionist and a member of the Illuminati, of the liberal side of the Illuminati, became presid president of Iran, Turkey's relationship with Iran improved. As Turkey is run by capitalist Jews who are allied with the liberal side of the Illuminati. The Satanists or Illuminati of Iran and the Jews of Turkey joined due to, the, to their mutual hatred and enmity of ISIL, who, who were ruining the plans of both of these secret societies. Their plan for the fake World War III, which actually began on, on 2012. By the way, on that video on July 2015, I also said that there is a secret Illuminati plan for Russia to invade Syria Iraq and then Turkey and three months later on October 2015 the Russian military actually entered both Syria and Iraq and there, then there were even reports that they tried to enter Turkey's airspace but they were shot down and this coup in Turkey that happened recently was also planned by the Illuminati because as I said the Illuminati wanted Russia to conquer Syria Iraq and Turkey and then hand them over, hand all of them over to Iran and Israel and to the uh, Shia Zionist Illuminati. Now what the media is saying is that the reason why Erdogan improved relations with Russia was because America was responsible for the recent coup and that America was trying to overthrow Erdogan. So now he has sided with Russia instead. 
But this is a total lie because a few days after, Erdogan also improved relations with America. So the TV narrative and the so-called alternative media narrative of the fake conspiracy theorists makes no sense at all. In reality, the Illuminati consists of both Russia and America, as well as Iran, Israel, Saudi, and many others. So Erdogan has also now sold out to the Illuminati, just as Assad did when he betrayed the Iraqi resistance about 10 years ago. As I said before, Assad and Erdogan were initially both independent from the Illuminati, but through political deceptions and threats, the Illuminati got them to attack each other and have managed to force them both to compromise with the Illuminati while they are at each other's throats. As I said, Assad, Bashar Assad himself is being betrayed on the last parts of my the, the Real Truth About Assad video series. And interestingly, recently Assad has admitted that there has been some misunderstanding between his soldiers and the Hezbo Dajjal, and there are also reports of conflicts between them. And remember, the Hezbo Dajjal are Iran's militias. They are the so-called Hezbollah. I call them Hezbo Dajjal. Now, if the Nusairis and the Assad government are watching this video, and I know that they are, I want them to know that Iran is behind both Jabhat al-Nusra and the Hezbo Dajjal. And these two groups in Syria are there to take over no matter which side wins. They are there to take over Syria for the Illuminati, for the Zionist Illuminati, for Iran and Israel, regardless of who wins this conflict. If the Syrian rebels win, Jabhat al-Nusra will try to take over, as, just as they tried initially when, they were, uh, when the war first began in 2012. And you know, they attacked the FSA and tried to force their fighters to join them. They actually tried to force the FSA into joining the uh, Jabhat al-Nusra. And if Assad wins, then Iran's army and the Hezbollah Dajjal will try to take over and make Assad into their puppet or simply kill him, assassinate him, using Jabhat al-Nusra and then replace him with their own puppet. And then it would seem like Jabhat al-Nusra killed him, it would seem like the Sunnis killed him, so the Nusayri soldiers won't complain. They won't turn against the 12 Imamis. And my advice to the Syrian people is that they must unite under Islam and get rid of the rabbis who have infiltrated them and they must recognize that their primary enemies are Israel, Iran, Russia, America, and the UN. Until and unless they focus on their real enemies and abandon, their, abandon, abandon every belief, ideology, and fatwa that contradicts the Quran, this chaos will continue and it will only get worse. This is my warning to the Syrian people. If you don't do what I just said, which is to reject anything that contradicts the Quran and know who your real enemies are and rec recognize that they are your enemies and stop fighting each other and focus on the real enemies in instead, Iran, America, Russia, Israel, the UN, unless and until you do that, this Syrian conflict will get worse and worse. And it is proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that Iran, Russia, and America are all on the same side. So there is no excuse anymore for anyone to doubt this clear fact. So there is no excuse for anyone to uh, distinguish between these groups from now on. And after the dust settled and the witch hunt began, Turkey's relationship with its key NATO partner and ally only got worse. Accusations flew of the US harboring Turkish opposition leader Fethullah Gulen, wanted as a terrorist in Turkey and accused of masterminding the coup. The Turkish president is in Russia to mend fences with Vladimir Putin. Ties between the two countries have been strained since Turkey shot down a Russian fighter jet last November. So, can they be allies? And what will this mean for the West? 
uh, has made Moscow a very key potential ally uh, for Turkey for its uh, future relations, both uh, in terms of foreign policy. Uh, Putin was very quick to exploit uh, the, the differences that were emerging between the West and Turkey. Turkish perception of the Western uh, countries not being supportive enough uh, against the coup attempt not, and not being cooperative enough to fight the aftermath of the coup. Mark, what do you make of Vladimir Putin's um, full-throated, forceful support of, um, of Erdogan um, in the aftermath of the coup? So I think uh, part of their intent surely must be uh, to uh, do whatever they can, uh, however slight it is, to draw a wedge uh, in relations between Turkey and the West, which the Turkish government, however correctly or incorrectly, uh, has cast large insinuations uh, that the U.S. either directly or indirectly played some role. I, I mean, the Russian president wouldn't be doing his job if he wasn't trying to exploit cracks in the NATO alliance. I mean, NATO is massing troops on Russia's border. But despite all the facts, the Zionist actors on TV continue with their false narrative and they tell the same lies even when it makes no sense. They know that most people don't think and they just rely on these so-called political experts who are really just a bunch of paid actors to supposedly inform them. They know that most people just turn on the TV and they sit back and they just want to be told the truth and they don't want to search for the truth, they don't want to think and they don't even want, want to look for someone else that might actually tell them the truth. They just want to relax and you know lazily just change and if they don't like what they're hearing they just think that they can find the truth by changing the channel. They say hey I don't like this guy, change channel, oh uh, let me listen to this guy instead. Uh, I, I don't like Webster Tarpley, oh Imran Hussain. Oh, I don't like Imran Hussain. Oh, George Galloway. You know, most people just want to sit back and uh, they think that by changing the channel they can find the truth. Oh, it's Ahmadinejad. Oh, it's uh, Vladimir Putin. Oh, it's George Bush. Oh, it's Barack Obama. Oh, I don't like Obama. He's too liberal. Oh, George Bush, the Republican. I don't like him. He's a Republican. I, I want to find a Muslim. You know, they think that the way to find the truth is by changing the channel and uh, instead of turning it off, and actually either researching or communicating with real people, normal people who have actually analyzed these things, who are not paid agents, who are not part of the uh, structure. Because <laughs> you, I know they try to give you this illusion that by changing the channel you're uh, getting different information. But you have to understand that all these different channels are controlled. The entire TV is controlled just because they show you this logo of ABC News doesn't mean that it's different from some other organization with a different logo. Okay, they try to give you this illusion by giving you logos, they try to give you this illusion that they're different. So they give you RT, and now it's ABC News, and now it's Fox News. See, it's a different logo, so it has to be different, right? But they're actually all run by Zionists, and you can tell by the narrative. They all have the same narrative, and they even all report on the same stories at the same time. They, say, they supposedly send their reporters to the same countries on the same days, on the same, at the same time. And you know, out of all the countries in the world, they expect us to think that nothing is happening anywhere today. Today nothing is happening anywhere, it's only happening in uh, Ukraine. And tomorrow nothing is happening in the world, it's only Syria. And next week nothing is happening in the world, it's only uh, Saudi Arabia. But they don't, you know, you know, if these were really independent news agencies, they would have been reporting not only on completely different issues, but they would also have many different narratives. Even if their narratives were wrong, they would have many different narratives. But they only disagree with each other over the rhetoric, not over the narrative, not, not over the so-called official version of history, which, which are being written by the same people no matter which channel you change it to, even if you change to a different country's TV channel like you know Russia or Iran or Israel or Saudi Arabia, it doesn't make any difference, or Kuwait or uh, America. But you see, when the facts become clear, 
when the facts are as clear as daylight, when it's impossible to, to hide something from the public, what the Zionist media then does is that they try to distract you with nonsense and fake stories and continue their narrative at the same time. It's at times like this that if you pay very close attention and you compare the official narrative with what's actually happening openly, with what you, what you can actually see in real life, you see that the official narrative makes no sense at all and they are relying on repetition and distractions. This is similar to what happened when Iran helped America invade Afghanistan and then Iraq. You see, they couldn't hide something so obvious because Iran actually sent their Quds Force, Quds Force and bad brigade militias and other soldiers to actually fight alongside the American soldiers against the Muslims. When you have thousands of people involved in something, when you have thousands of soldiers, for example, it's impossible to hide it or deny it because these soldiers each have many friends and relatives and family members. So if the media lies, millions of people will know right away that the media is lying. So you see, they can't lie about something so obvious. So instead, they distract you with something else and in between the distractions, they slowly continue their fake narrative as if nothing happened. So for example, in the case of Iran helping America, they distracted people by all of a sudden fabricating a, a story about Iran's supposed nuclear agenda. And all throughout the presidency of Ahmadinejad, when Iran's Shia soldiers and militias were fighting for America against the Sunnis of Afghanistan and Iraq, against the Hanafi Mujahideen, against the Ba'athist army of Saddam, and against the Salafi and Shafi'i Mujahideen of Iraq, all at that time, the media only focused on what Ahmadinejad was saying, not on what he was actually doing, not on the actions of the government of Iran, but on what they were saying, on their words, on the rhetoric. You see, the entire focus of the media was that Bush said that Iran is terrorist. President Khatami of Iran developed nuclear technology. Then Bush threatened to invade Iran. Then President Ahmadinejad of Iran questioned the Holocaust. Then Israel condemned and threatened Iran. Then Ahmadinejad continued producing nukes. Then Obama condemned and threatened Iran. Then Ahmadinejad said death to America. Then Obama said uh, something else. He said something bad about Iran. And then Ahmadinejad said something else. And then Hillary Clinton said that Putin doesn't have a soul. And then Putin said that Hillary Clinton doesn't have a brain. They actually said these things. I'm not making any of these up. They actually reported these things on the media. See, it's like a soap opera. It's like a show. They're just calling each other names. It's, a, it's an act. Can you see it? <laughs> They're just calling each other names. It doesn't mean anything. What does all this mean? Did the... Uh, did the uh, did the actions of Iran result in America invading and attacking Iran? Did it result in Israel attacking Iran? No. So what, what was it all for? You see, as soon as America accused Saddam Hussein of having WMDs, they invaded them. If they really want to invade, that story is just an excuse. They don't need to actually prove it. Did they actually prove that Iraq had WMDs, weapons of mass destruction? No, if they want to do it, they'll do it. Okay, when they're just talking all the time, they don't want to do it, don't you see? They've been repeating this stuff for over 10 years, actually for over 30 years, since the beginning of the revolution, for, actually for over 35, since 1979. I mean, for many years, these stories just went on and on and on. Many of them were repeated hundreds of times, almost every day, all the while Iran and America were sharing Iraq's 
oil with Israel. All the while, the Saudi Kingdom and Iran were both telling their agents in Afghanistan, like Abdul Rasul Sayyaf and General Dustum and the Shia militias, to fight for America and to support the American puppet government. So you see, the truth is as clear as daylight, so long as you have the eyes to see and ears to hear. But if you choose to be blind, if you choose to watch TV and believe their lies, and if you choose to follow their propaganda and their fake narrative, then know that no matter what happens, as long as the shayateen have an audience, they will continue to lie and they will stop at nothing to manipulate us and to drag us down into hell with them.